Hello. A long time ago I posted this little video on Twitter it, and it was quite well received. Today I'm going to finally explain what's going on here. I'll talk about the technique that I call narrow CA grafting. And to make grafted CAs work well together, I'll explain how to train related or sublink narrow cell automata. For today's experiment, I used PyTorch version of the notebook that comes with our self-organizing textures article as a starting point. I made a few modifications that I'll explain now. First, I save the initial randomly initialized state of a neural cell automata and uh, use it as a starting point for all subsequent training runs I did uh, and a bit later I'll explain why I decided to do that. Then I took uh, two different texture patterns as targets and uh, trained two models independently starting from the saved initial starting point. And uh, I saved those models in separate, uh, saved checkpoints in separate files, and these are behaviors that I've got for um, for dots pattern and for chessboard pattern. As it usually happens, inspiration for today's experiment comes from biology, or this time uh, from gardening. Grafting is the process when part of one plant gets transplanted on a trunk of another, of another plant, and uh, it happens for closely related plants, it can continue growing on a new host, and uh, I decided to see if I can graft neural cell automata. So uh, how can I do that? Uh, for example, I can run different uh, rules for different cells of the grid. Let's try to implement this procedure. First, we will need to create a mask, which will uh, tell which rules are going to be applied to which parts of the grid. I want to ex execute one pattern as a background and select an area in the center of the grid where a different pattern is going to be applied. So I created this array of distances from the center of the grid and now we'll use it to create a mask. Okay, uh, here is a mask. Now let's try to combine two different cell automata rules on the same grid. What I'm doing here is loading uh, two different models from safe checkpoints and then uh, creating the initial state. Then I'm going to apply both of those rules to the initial uh, to current grid state and combine the outputs of two cell automata according to the mask. So uh, here I apply I'm applying two different rules to the current grid state and then uh, combining the new state from the outputs of two different cell automata rules and after 500 steps I have uh, this image so it looks like there is some disturbance around this sharp boundary transition area but nevertheless both patterns both cell automata happen to produce consistent patterns in their areas uh, if I run this rule for a longer time, looks like it didn't explode. We can also try to see what does the behavior look like in dynamics. So here are the first thousand steps of narrow CA evolution. Let's accelerate it a little bit to see the dynamics. 
uh, at a different time scale. I'm doing eight frame, eight uh, CA steps per frame. Looks like cell automata are capable of uh, coexisting happily on the same grid. I decided to try to make a gradual uh, smooth transition between the areas controlled by different cell automata rules. Uh, to do this, I must modify the uh, mask that we use for combining those rules. We need to have the smooth transi transition area. One way to achieve this is to use familiar sigmoid function. This coefficient will control the smoothness of the boundary. Let's run the simulation again and zoom the video a little bit. We see that cell automata can coexist even when we uh, smoothly varying the rule between two regions of the grid. Although I wasn't completely happy with this transition region, it seems that intermediate states don't look like a smooth transition between two patterns. There are some behaviors that, uh, well, it's a kind of weird mix of behaviors and I thought if I can uh, find ways to uh, improve this. But before doing that, Let's try to see what would linear interpolation between uh, neural C parameters would look like if you vary them in time. Now, instead of using mask that varies rule uh, depending on location, I interpolate between two neural C rules in time, and we see that. Uh, intermediate states show some kind of uh, patterns, but let's see if we can make this transition uh, look more natural. And here is when the concept of uh, sublink or related cell automata come into play. Let's make one tiny change to the model training. Uh, we will change the initialization. Instead of starting from the randomly initialized checkpoint, we will use through trained bubbles or spots or dots texture uh, cell automata. This is known as fine tuning in uh, machine learning literature. So we will. I'm loading the dots checkpoint. Uh, as an initialization and we will change the name of the saved model. Also, I'd like to compare the uh, loss evolution uh, of two training runs, the uh, original uh, training from scratch and the new one, uh, fine tuning. So let's plot two loss graphs in parallel while training. Let's save the previous log. And let's plot it while we are training the model. And also I want to show the uh, batch to visualize the state of, car of the last training batch a bit more often. And let's see how will it work. What we see is kind of interesting. We see that uh, the model started to produce a checkerboard uh, like patterns very quickly. And also we can see that in the very early iterations, if, we, if I run training from scratch, it will be apparent. Let's just uh, train for like, hundreds, of, hundreds of steps from scratch. You will see that at the very first step we have bubbles, as expected, and then very quickly those bubbles turn into uh, those checkerboard patterns, although, the, although they are not yet aligned on a grid. So uh, if we train longer, 
uh, the optimization will learn to arrange those squares that were obtained from bubbles into a checkerboard grid. We also see that the new loss goes down much faster than the original loss plot. That's a well-known effect of uh, model fine-tuning, that a uh, good starting point leads to better convergence and uh, even better optima. After about a thousand of steps, the new model already looks pretty good. So let's uh, pause the trading and see how will the new model behave in a multiple cell automata on the same grid setting. So uh, the new checkpoint was stored in this dots underscore chess uh, file. So let's change the name of the second cell automata. And first let's try to see what would a uh, gradual transition look like. So we start from dots and then those dots should gradually turn into uh, squares and those squares are gradually aligning on the grid. And uh, this, all we do is linearly interpolating uh, neural network, well, it can be seen as linear interpolation of neural network parameters or linear interpolation of neural CA outputs. Those two, two methods are pretty comparable in their behavior. And uh, we can also try the per pixel varying rule uh, setting. Multiply by mask instead of time. Here is what the transition area between regions of the grid controlled by different neural CA rules looks like now. To me, it feels like much more natural and smooth transition. And I think there is some interesting biological analogy here, because we know in case of grafting or in case of uh, tissue or organ transplantation between organisms, the closer the relation between two organisms, the higher the chances of success are. Of course, this is a pretty speculative analogy, though. We can also try to see how the new chess pattern works with the old chess pattern. See? We see that while those two neural cell automata were trained to produce the same pattern, they were unable to build a coherent transition. Now I would like to train a CA for yet another pattern starting from the same uh, dots, check, dots checkpoint and see whether two sublinks are going to be collaborative or compatible with each other. Okay, the model trained for 4000 of steps. Let's see what would happen now. Say we will use dots chess model as the background and dots dot bubbles model as a foreground. Let's compare the behavior that we observe with the chessboard model trained from random initialization. Well, this time boundary behavior looks interesting to me as well. And let's magnify the transition region to have a better view on its behavior. I have created this little helper function that uh, loads two checkpoints using the provided file names and renders a thin but wide stripe video that shows the transition region closer. And we see that first video that shows chessboard trained from scratch and bubbles that has dots as a parent displays a pretty disturbed transition. So we see that those bubbles that were produced by the second cell automata try to avoid this uh, region. 
and then the sublink patterns that share the parent dots uh, have a pretty smooth transition behavior. I also rendered a pair of uh, models, two pairs of models that we trained earlier. So here is a dots and chess pattern that don't have any relation to each other except the random initialization checkpoint. And uh, another pair is a parent-child relation and we have this very smooth and nice and gradual transition. To conclude, let's also render the transition between dots and uh, bubbles related pair. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Today I showed how to graft multiple cell automata on the same grid and how to make those cell automata work better together by fine-tuning them from the same parent checkpoint. I hope you found this tutorial interesting. I think this technique may have potential, for example, for artistic applications. And in one of the future videos, I'm planning to explain how to export those models for the interactive web application. Thank you for watching.